All right, now the first variation from the standard form is an ellipse that is not centered at the origin. And the equation of an ellipse that is offset from the origin, say that it's centered at the arbitrary coordinates p, q, the equation of this ellipse has the form x minus p all squared over a squared plus y minus q all squared over b squared is equal to 1. So as you can see, the equation still resembles the standard form. And here the terms a and b still represent the semi-major and semi-minor axes respectively. The only difference is we have the x-coordinate of the center point subtracted from the variable x and the y-coordinate of the center point subtracted from the variable y. So on a graph, say for example that I have the center point of an ellipse located at the arbitrary coordinates p and q. Let's choose an arbitrary semi-major axis of say 6 units and let's say the semi-minor axis is 4 units and since I've determined the locations of the vertices a and a prime and b and b prime I can roughly sketch this ellipse Alright, in fact we can write the exact equation for this ellipse. So the center point was located at 4, 3. So we have x minus the x coordinate of the center point, which is 4, all squared, over the semi-major axis of 6 squared, plus y minus the y coordinate of the center point, all squared, over the semi-minor axis of 4 all squared equals to 1. And we can write this as x minus 4 all squared over 36 plus y minus 3 all squared over 16 equals 1. All right, let's do another example. Let's sketch the curve of the equation 9x squared plus 36x plus 16y squared plus 96y equals negative 36. Now the terms 9x squared and 16y squared imply that this is an equation of an ellipse and the addition of the linear x and y terms indicate that it is offset from the origin. And on the right hand side we have a negative number. This doesn't imply that the equation is invalid or that the ellipse has a negative radius or an axis at any point because as you'll see the equation will make a lot more sense once we manipulate it to a more recognizable form by completing the square on the x and y terms. So let's do that. So factoring out a 9 in the x terms I have 9 outside of x squared plus 4x and factoring out a 16 for the y terms, I have 16 outside of y squared plus 6y is equal to negative 36. Okay, so let's complete the square on the first parentheses. So with x squared plus 4x, to complete the square, I'd like to add 4 to these two terms. And if I add 4, I need to subtract 4 to effectively add by 0. To maintain equivalency between what I've just written here and the above parenthesis, the 9 comes down as well. On the second parenthesis, I'd like to add 9 to the terms y squared plus 6y. And if I added 9, I need to subtract a 9. Again, to maintain equivalency between what I've written here and its corresponding terms and the coefficient 16 is copied down as well. And of course, this is still equal to negative 36. But what I can do now is to write x squared plus 4x plus 4 as x plus 2 all squared 
the minus 4 remains and the coefficient in front 9 also remains. Similarly I can write y squared plus 6y plus 9 as y plus 3 all squared. The trailing minus 9 gets carried and of course the coefficient positive 16 also gets carried as does the negative 36. So now the number 9 can be multiplied into the first set of brackets and the number 16 can also be multiplied into the second set of brackets. So we have 9 outside of x plus 2 all squared minus 36 plus 16 outside of y plus 3 all squared minus 144 is equal to negative 36. So we have a negative 36 on the left and a negative 36 on the right and these can cancel. And I can take this negative 144 to the other side. Now this gives me 9 outside of x plus 2 all squared plus 16 outside of y plus 3 all squared is equal to 144. Now dividing both sides by 144. So the equation now becomes 9 by x plus 2 all squared over 144 plus 16 by y plus 3 squared over 144 is equal to 1. The 9 and the 144 cancels down to 16. So we have x plus 2 all squared over 16 plus the 16 and the 144 cancels down to 9. So we have y plus 3 all squared over 9 is equal to 1. 16 can be expressed as 4 squared and 9 can be expressed as 3 squared. So we are getting close to the form x minus p all squared over a squared plus y minus q all squared over b squared is equal to 1. Except that we have pluses instead of minuses so to change that we can simply express them as a double negative. So we can write x plus 2 as x minus negative 2 all squared divided by 4 squared plus and we can express y plus 3 as y minus negative 3 all squared over 3 squared is equal to 1. So therefore this is an ellipse centered at the coordinates negative 2 and negative 3 with semi-major axis 4 and semi-minor axis 3. So let's give this one a quick sketch. So the center of this ellipse is at negative 2, negative 3. It has a semi-major axis of length 4 and a semi-minor axis of length 3. So marking out the vertices, I can now roughly sketch this ellipse. Again looks like a wobbly egg. Now let's mark out the final features which are the foci and the directrices. So recall that the distance from the center point is given by the semi-major axis times the eccentricity, a by e, which is equal to the square root of a squared minus b squared. So we have the square root of 4 squared minus 3 squared, which is equal to the square root of 7, which is approximately equal to 2.65. So the focal points are approximately 1, 2.65, let's say here, from the center point. So we have the focus f here, and we have another 1, 2, and 0.65, so here is the focal point f prime. And the directrices are the semi-major axis over the eccentricity away from the center point. So a over e, which is equal to a squared over the square root of a squared plus b squared, which equals 16 divided by root 7. And this is approximately equal to 6. 
So we have a directrix that is six units to the right of the center point. Let's call this D. And a directrix that is six units to the left of the center point. Let's call this D prime. So in summary, given a semi-major and semi-minor axis, an ellipse that is offset from the origin is the same shape as one that is centered about the origin, except that every feature has been shifted by the value of the center point coordinates. So the center point has been shifted to the coordinate PQ, as has the focal points, and similarly the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts, and finally the directrices uh, offset by the value P. So I hope this video has comprehensively described how to construct an ellipse that is not centered at zero zero. If you have found this video useful please give me a like and please share this video with your friends. If you have any questions please use the comments below and please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more videos that may help you with your assignments and homework. And on our next video, we will look at ellipses with the major axis that is parallel to the y-axis. So until then, best of luck with your studies, and I'll see you on the next video.